Hi guys, uh, this is Jimmy from Chaos Group and in this video I'd like to show you one of the new things that we added to Phoenix AFD in version 2.0. So as you can see I have a very simple scene, I have a very sun and sky system and I also have a physical camera. I'm rendering through this uh, physical camera. And what I want to do is uh, simulate some liquids. So what I did here is uh, I just uh, checked these two checkboxes and loaded the liquid flowing preset. I also made sure that my source is emitting a temperature of 1, it's not emitting any smoke and I'm using the brush mode so that I'm not injecting the fluid and I'm actually letting it flow. Uh, the fluid is coming from this box and I'm actually only flowing it from the polygon IDs that have an ID of 1. And I also made this box uh, here in the object properties. I made it not renderable and I said that I want to display it as a box. Here in the settings of the simulator, I did something else uh, also. Uh, what is this is that I set up my preview uh, because I want to be able to see the temperature between 1 and 0 0.1 degrees. So uh, right now, if I start my simulation, we'll see some water flowing. And if I render out, let's stop it. Uh, you see that I also applied a certain uh, water shader to my uh, fluid here. Okay, so uh, there's nothing new up till now and uh, however if we uh, open this liquid tab you'll see that uh, in addition to the old uh, settings that we have we have a bunch of new things here and right now I want to talk about this set subset of settings here that says foam. So I'm just going to enable the foam checkbox and start the simulation again. And in a second you'll see that these uh, white particles appear in my fluid. So basically in, in Phoenix FD 2.0 we added the ability uh, to simulate things like foam or splashes. Uh, and um, to do this actually Phoenix is generating a bunch of particles inside the fluid. And in the case of the foam that I want to talk about, uh, there's a set of settings here that actually control uh, how many uh, particles are created and when they're created. So let's examine those settings. Um, the first two basically control uh, what I said previously, uh, when, the set, when the particles are being born and how many of those are being born. So Phoenix has some uh, internal conditions that need to be met for each cell in order for it to generate some uh, particles, some foam particles. And with the birth threshold you actually specify a percentage of this um, uh, requirements that need to be met in order to generate the particles. So if I decrease the threshold the particles are going to be created uh, much more often because uh, a lower percentage of the requirements need to be met and you'll see that Phoenix is actually generating many many uh, foam particles right now. And uh, if I increase this quite a lot uh, this will make it harder for Phoenix to generate those um, particles and they will, will appear less often. So maybe this simulation is not violent enough for foam right now. Okay, uh, I'm going to bring this back to 85 and the other thing that we have is the birth rate. So this uh, is a very straightforward parameter. Basically it says for each cell that meets this birth threshold generate this number of particles for the foam. And uh, I'm going to stop this right now, so I can talk about a little bit about the next settings. Uh, after this uh, birth conditions, we have a bunch of settings that control the size. We have size variation, size, size distribution, so we can add some uh, random uh, randomness to the size of these particles. We also have the half-life parameter, which actually specifies uh, a certain time at which a, a bubble will burst with a 50% uh, probability. So it's a sort of a variation for the bursting of the bubbles and the other thing that we have interesting here is the rising rate so uh, you probably know that uh, if there are bubbles under water they will try to rise to the top and the rising rate actually specifies the speed at which those uh, bubbles rise now um, while we're here I want to show you something in the preview and that is that you can actually change the color with which those um, foam particles are generated so if you if you have something for example a white background and you don't see them that well you can just uh, change the color here 
Okay, so uh, these are the settings for the generation of my uh, foam particles, but right now if I render out, we won't be able to see any particles whatsoever. And the reason for this is that we don't have any shading applied to those particles. So they're particles, but that they're also invisible. And the shading is done uh, through the Phoenix uh, foam object. So we need to go to Create, Geometry, Phoenix FD, and Phoenix Foam. Now just drag one out. Uh, once again, this is a dummy, and it just controls um, the foam, uh, the, the shading of the foam. Okay, what I need to do here is I need to specify uh, which uh, foam I want to shade basically. So I'm going to pick my Phoenix here and specify that I want to shade the foam. And to also ask me if I want to use this simulator as a liquid. So I'll say yes right now and I'll explain a little bit later what this is doing. And now if I hit render, we'll be able to see the result. Okay, so the particles are barely visible right now. Uh, you can see those white uh, pixels here. These are the actual, the actual foam. But, and this is because my foam is too small and also this is um, too big of a mess here, right here in the fluid. So uh, in order to explain uh, better and easier what the, the options here are about, I'm going to stop using this simulation and I'm going to use uh, one particle system instead. So let me find it first. I'll zoom out and right here I have my uh, particle system. So I'm going to enable it and uh, specify that I want to use it instead of my Phoenix simulation. Okay, uh, let's pick a better viewpoint. And we can start rendering again. Okay, so now I render once again and you'll be able to see the actual bubbles. And we have this size multiplier which controls the size. It's a multiplier for the size quite obviously. So I'm going to increase this so that we see the bubbles uh, better. And right now those uh, bubbles don't look too well. Uh, so let's try and fix that. And we'll also see what, we what settings we have. The first thing that we have is the color for the bubbles. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. If I change the color to green or yellow, my bubbles will become yellow. And if I make them red, obviously they will be red. So uh, nothing special here. Uh, next we have this bounces parameter and this is actually a parameter that specifies the number of uh, bounces a ray will make. So how many times a ray of light is going to be reflected or refracted through these bubbles. Obviously when we increase this uh, rendering will become slower because we need to trace uh, more uh, refracted and reflected rays but it will add some uh, realism to our uh, bubbles. <coughs> Other than that, we have options for the refractive index. Uh, we also have multipliers for the diffuse and for the uh, highlights. So it's a pretty straightforward setup. And uh, then we have a bunch of controls for the size. So I showed you already the size multiplier. And if I increase it, you see that the bubbles become uh, larger. We can also add some variation with the help of the size variation and size distribution you know, parameters. And uh, all in all, it's uh, pretty easy to set up these uh, bubbles. And uh, I want to show something here that's a little bit more interesting. Uh, it is the mode of the um, foam. So for generating foam, we have two different modes. Those are the bubble and the cellular. So if I set this to bubbles and render it out, you see that uh, my foam actually uh, is created by bubbles that are independent from each other and even if they cross they don't make any cells together they just uh, fall separately and if I set this to cellular you will be able to see um, that some of the bubbles will merge together and they will form a thin wall uh, between them so for example these ones here have merged okay uh, other than that uh, we have this environment checkbox and uh, it actually allows us to specify an environment just for the foam or just for the bubbles so that whenever this uh, bounces limit is met instead of um, returning a black color or whatever it's going uh, this ray is going to hit it, uh, the environment 
for the fog and this environment is going to be reflected or refracted. Now, uh, something that's interesting uh, is this uh, subgroup uh, mo option here. And you see that we have uh, underwater and above water. And uh, previously it asked me uh, if I want to use the Phoenix simulator for my liquid geometry. And I said yes and told you that I'm going to explain this a little bit later. So uh, obviously when you have foam that's flowing inside the liquid and if when it rises on top of the liquid, the, two, uh, the foam looks differently whether it's inside the liquid or outside the liquid. And uh, to generate this effect you need to shade and you need to be able to distinguish if the foam is inside the liquid or outside the liquid and shade each part uh, separately. So that's what this subgroup allows us to do. So let's say I want to, so to shade all the uh, bubbles that are outside the liquid. I'm going to say above water and basically right now nothing will change. So we get the same bubbles but uh, if I switch to underwater you'll see that we don't have any bubbles right now. So let's try and find some bubbles that are under the water. I think those over there that enter the liquid are going to do this for us. So let's zoom in on them. And we'll render out. Uh, it will take some time because we need to trace uh, a lot of GI rays through the bubbles, through the liquid, so we'll see the final result right now. Okay, so you can see now that uh, those particles that are outside of the fluid and should be over here are not shaded at all, and the other particles that are inside the fluid uh, are actually shaded and you can see them. So uh, this is basically the settings uh, that I wanted to talk about. Uh, you can see it's pretty straightforward and easy to set up the shading. And uh, before we finish, I just want to show you one simple animation that was created using uh, this uh, feature. So here's our animation and we have this uh, liquid pouring inside the glass. It's actually beer. And you can see the foam being generated, rising to the top and then uh, settling down a little bit. Okay, so this uh, pretty much concludes my presentation. Uh, I'm Dimitar Christov-Jimmy and I thank you for watching.